So this is our 500 square meter lot that we will be dividing into two 250 square meter parcels of which we will be building our house that we live in on the first one you see excavated and then we'll be building the one that we sell on the other lot. Both houses will be a two-story house. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in the detail and design of both houses. On this, you'll actually see the trench and how soft the ground is here. I really had to make sure that I engineered my footers on our fence to act appropriately to the soil conditions and the amount of water that we found so shallow. Uh, 110 centimeters or 1.1 meters we found water and as we were excavating the trenches they were literally collapsing so the design and engineering of the footers really really matter a lot with this especially with the surrounding area being flooded for rice fields the other tricky part of the construction of this is the foreman uh, doesn't speak a lot of english this is the crew's first time ever doing an engineering and design like this with the concrete the rebar pour and form so donna played a very critical very critical role in translating to the foreman the uh, but it's one. a great foreman great crew on one line only yes only one line one yeah. very very the best 88 pesos ever <laughs> so bottom of footer you got 32 inches for the width of the footer six inches yeah. no so weight lang sa dali lang edge to edge six inches on center four pieces mm. six inches on center yeah. so spaced six inches on center for each one of these so this is the edge of the trench edge of the trench four bar yeah. 10 millimeter the bottom of the trench this is looking your 12 millimeter is going to be bent okay and this is the delete <laughs> 2.83 I really walked through with the foreman on this site and made sure he was completely understanding of the location of the columns and what I really expected from the crew members. Uh, digging this trench back out wasn't too difficult until they got a little bit deeper and it started getting really wet, really mucky. But overall, the soil is super, super soft. As you will see, you don't really need a breaker bar. Even as they're digging all of this, the sides of the, the embankment keep calving off or keep falling in and breaking off. So it wasn't just digging out the main trench, it was literally digging out everything that kept falling in. Uh, so we ended up shoring up some of the sides as we started going. As you can see, a big, big chunk right there. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of difficult when you start digging. Now, if we would have gone really deep, we would have stopped and we would have done something else for their safety. Mer merong ano uh, dahil bumabagsak siya guys. Ang laki na ng iwang oh. Mamaya nandoon na kami sa gitna. <laughs> Doon na lang kami. I just recently discovered this tough fort, and I tell you what, it is amazing for concrete form work, by the way. Wow, amazing! Na mababa pala yun! So, the original engine that came on this was a gasoline powered, it was like, a, I want to say it was like a 60cc gasoline engine that was originally equipped on this Fuji concrete mixer. At the extra expense, I asked them to upgrade this to a 12 horsepower diesel engine. Um, this is technically a one bagger concrete mixer, which means it can handle the capacity of if you were mixed one bag of concrete at a time but that's why i wanted the 12 horsepower so we can mix up to two bags at a time and it can still handle it now i've seen other diesel engines that were 
six horsepower diesel engines. Um, I didn't like the way those ones performed, so I made sure that we upgraded our, our diesel engine because I've seen them go out on other sites. Those of you that don't know, when you're doing stirrups for anything, it doesn't matter if it's a roofing column beam, matter if it's the tie beam or your actual columns, you have to have that 135 bend in there. Why is that? Because this prevents your column from shearing out. If you didn't, if these were just straight and there was any force, these columns in your column explodes and or your roofing column beam explodes out. What this 135 does is when you pour the concrete in there, it also helps to have that grabbing inside the concrete helps to keep that stirrup from blowing out from your actual roofing column beams, tie beams, most importantly, the columns in your house. So a lot of structural failure occur because people take that shortcut and they don't put that 135 in there. Obviously that piece is a little bit long, so <laughs> it should be about two inches in there on the on these ones. Okay. So, but depending on the size of the stirrup, these will actually get longer depending on the size of the actual columns. So we did that on another friend's site and we warned them we don't want your column shearing. So this is all about shear strength on the column. It's nice to have cold water on the site. <laughs> So you guys will see, I've got a lot of power tools, a lot of power equipment. It's all to make their job easier. Not, yes, it's an added cost, but not only does it make their job easier, but it overall it speeds up the, the, the job, adds quality, and keeps fatigue from setting in. When you're doing everything by hand, the hard way, fatigue really starts to set in. Now I know these guys can handle it, but if I can make their job easier, then so be it. Nagation sa ilali mo. Very good na sila. Taas na nila. Bilis. Oh my goodness. Gloves, sir. Hey, you got gloves, mate. I take my plate packer. I, I can't pack it when it's thick. Kasi hindi po siya pwedeng ipakpakpak. Uh, <laughs> Makapal. Ayun. Ano daw? Vibrating. So that when we start to run that plate compactor in there, we're not getting a ton of dirt and on the gravel. So we're just gonna get those set in there, tied in. It's just one of the many things you'll have to deal with sometimes. Just gotta work with what Mother Nature gives you. As you can see, as they're just barely setting on there, stuff's just collapsing in on them. Whatever we can do to keep these, keep any of this dirt out as we run that plate compactor, it's gonna vibrate, it's gonna knock a lot of dirt in there. So if we can keep it out, and we'll just keep it in there until we pour the concrete, it's going to be set at 32 inches wide. We'll tie it in later once we get it plate compacted.
yesterday we had a delay in my 12 millimeter rebar coming in we actually had a friend who had 50 pieces left over so she asked someone to pick up the 50 pieces from her house and deliver it to ours while we await for more stock to arrive I went to another hardware store, ordered 50 more pieces. We're going to go through this very, very quickly. So today they're able to rock and roll and start to get these columns set up and built. The stirrup manufacturers are over here. They're loving the cutoff side. It helps not have to get the fatigue on cutting each piece. I don't have my bar cutter anymore. We've got the tough board that we purchased for 2,500 pieces a piece. We set those up. These are going to be the forms for the solid concrete wall and we'll join those together. As we set these forms up for the, the five inch concrete wall, we'll be drilling holes along the form. We'll put tie wire from one form to another. We'll squeeze that together. We'll measure five inches um, top and bottom. Uh, on the very bottom, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to set the forms on the outside um, by just using blocking on the footer. Rebar is going in to the hole. This is the 32 inch footer I was explaining to you guys. And then we're coming up. So we'll be coming up just enough. We'll be tying in for additional. This packed in very, very well. So we've got the 16 inches of gravel pack. I'd say probably four to six inches packed into the sand. We just kept packing and packing until we got our actual 0.4 height, which is that yellow line in the very bottom of the hole. As you guys look down the center of this column, I told you guys yesterday, for some of you that aren't familiar with building here in the Philippines, um, a lot of expats that maybe don't know, uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're building your house, I talked to you about the 135 going into the concrete for shear strength. Today I'm going to talk to you about making sure that your workers are alternating that 135 every other, every other. And you can't all be on the same side. You got to alternate those. So as you look down that column, they're all alternating. The other thing that we've done is we've made sure that we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at 0 0.05 another five at point zero one and then the rest is at point zero four so they've all been evenly spaced and they are using a tape measure and they're not eyeballing this it's very important to have these evenly spaced uh, because we are doing in the five inch solid pour wall we've got to make sure that's done correctly and it's going to be able to help bear the weight of that concrete wall along with the footer so they've, they're, they've got a tape measure out there and they're precisely measuring those. He's coming down here and he's marking two foot on center for the verticals. Those verticals get tied in with the horizontals on the bottom. And then when we run a horizontal coming up on those pieces that you'll see sticking up, we're gonna run 10 mm, 16 on center, so it'll be three on center coming up this for the retaining wall. Now, as you guys knew on my last house build, I was really focused on quality. I made sure I took the time to do everything right. This build is gonna be no different. And when we start the second, third house, I should say, the house that we're going to build on the second lot, that there's gonna be no difference there. We're going to do the fence the same style, same way. It's all about taking the time, making sure the quality is there, making sure the house is going to last for at least another one or two generations. It adds a little bit of cost to it, but would you rather pay for it now or pay for it later, pay for double or triple the cost to fix that mistake? And it would probably cost double or triple to dig up this wall and redo it in case it failed. And the same goes for the house. You, you, taking shortcuts now will only cost you more money later and double or triple the price. So just take that extra time, do it the right way to start, and you won't have any issues down the road. step on this I mean it's hard as a rock obviously because we've got 0.4 gravel yeah or yeah we got 0.4 gravel and then we have a 0.4 footer that's this footer is super super thick because we have to have 
something to balance out the weight of this four foot wall on this side. So when we have that backfill, even if we have a lot of moisture out there, this isn't going anywhere. It's all gonna be super locked in and reinforced with this. This wall is not going anywhere. The first thing that's gonna give out is a hollow block, but this concrete wall is gonna be high enough. It acts as a flood wall now. Yes. So any flood waters come in, we're somewhat protected initially instead of soaking through the hollow block. Okay. Because hollow block is kind of porous. It's very weak versus concrete still porous, but now you can see the amount of metal that we use <laughs> when we do retaining walls or foundations. It's, it's a ton of metal. So you go down here all the way, they're doing a really good job. So once, once we get this entire footer poured, we'll lift these out of the way Oh. And these get readjusted. We'll backfill with gravel. Yes. Again. Oh, yes. Then these will get set back down at the height of that actual footer. These will get well then. So okay. once we set this, they're, they're still going to put their forms because the column is 25 centimeters. Here's the thickness of your column pretty much 10 inches. Mm hmm. So, you guys, this is uh, Thursday morning of week two. I jinxed us yesterday and I told another expat, um, we're in dry season, we're not gonna get any more rain. And this morning, concrete pour day, it never fails. What do you think happens? It rains. It's cloudy, overcast rain, but hey, that's okay. It's not bright and sunny. It gives my concrete a little bit of time to cure and it doesn't cure too quickly. Uh, but week two, I'm going to reveal our house plan in this coming up vlog. So later on in the vlog, we're gonna show you the floor plan and the dimensions and what we are putting on our 250 square meter lot. So stay tuned for later in the vlog and you're gonna see a whole lot of progress going on this week on season two of House Build Philippines. Track driver, move that, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let me see how much power I've got left because we've been running this quite a bit. 64. 84. 84. Good. They're yes. good. Yeah, really good. Big help. Imagine, good. guys, though we don't have to pump, especially when we are going to wet the cement. Yeah. This well, is... not only that, if you, if you had a hand pump bucket, hand pump and bucket, a lot more walking back and forth when you just turn that on and fill everything up. This is nice. That's expensive. It's very expensive, but 
when it comes to wet and rainy season, when we have this and that retaining wall, that four foot that comes out of the ground mm -hmm. is bearing everything. Okay. If it gets super wet and it starts to flood and it starts to saturate, let's say you have four months of super saturated ground and the ground out here, obviously you've seen it so, so wet already. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen when it gets super wet and with the sand mm -hmm. and you get one earthquake or anything? Mm -hmm. What happens this location wouldn't have been so wet and so sandy and the so soil wouldn't have been so soft we wouldn't have done this thick of this footer but we really need to overkill i mean i know there, a lot of people are going to say this is overkill but it's not not w with what i'd seen in the bottom with it being so wet we have to have such a large footer to hold this in yeah you could literally build a house around this and this footer would contain it but we're putting so much weight inside okay Thank you guys, good job. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, good morning everyone. <clears throat> so this is the end of week two of our project out here in San Pudoc, San Vicente Loco Sur. As you can see, I'm all smiles this morning because the crew that I've got, the foreman I have got, they are doing it outstanding job on our project on friday and saturday donna and i helped out some family friends of ours do their concrete flooring because they're going to do finished concrete so i was gone the last two days i really trusted the instructions that i gave this crew in the foreman and they outperformed my expectations they did phenomenal took no shortcuts did exactly like i'd asked to specifications so i'm all smiles they got even more done than what I expected. Week two couldn't have gone any better. Uh, now we did make a few changes, so I'm gonna walk you guys through some of those changes that we made um, due to some of the things that I had discovered when we were doing the excavation of the trench, as you can see in this video. So you see the back wall over here where we've got a, a priority to get this back wall done of this trench and the retaining wall so that the farmer can get his drain canal going again for his crops. Uh, now we did get fortunate and we, on the first day of concrete pour, we did get that rain. So it helped us out a little bit, um, give us a little bit of extra time. So we're gonna pour this footer on week three and then we're gonna get these walls formed up over here on week three. And then get the four foot retaining wall in here. Now you can see there's a lot of structural rebar. Yes, I know for some of you you're saying it's on the ground, but it's going to be lifted up. We do lift the rebar before we pour it. 
so we've actually got in each of the corners we're going to have a tall 20 foot column each corner we're going to have the solar lights attached to each of these columns on the front side this is the, the biggest you know i mean they they did an amazing job this week as you guys see in the, the video this is one solid footer beneath this wall so the changes that we made you see the form set up here so this is a solid concrete retaining wall so our grade you can see if i pan out right here i'll come down and show you guys so the proposed wall height is about eight inches above this board but our retaining our property is going to come to the height of the top of that four foot retaining wall so that yes that's all going to be back to one side and then our house is going to sit another half meter upon that the change that we made in this i was going to have the five foot thick retaining wall uh, upon the foreman's request uh just a box of columns in less cutting uh we save some time yes it's going to cost a little bit more money and you know i agree with them so we're going to actually go with a 10 inch wall right here all the way along all the way around the edges i'm okay with that it gives us a flood wall it gives us more structural support for the inside as i mentioned to you guys when they flood these rice fields it gets really wet and it was a super saturated ground let me come over here to this actual footer on here so you guys see the thickness of this to get the true comprehension of how thick and how structurally reinforced this footer is going to be i need to hold back all of this soil in this property that's a lot of weight pushing against those walls especially if the ground gets saturated i do not want a failure and in case it does flood out here these concrete walls also act as a flood wall and i can protect our home from flooding so you can see the true thickness of that now keep in mind the size of that footer we have a ton of gravel packed beneath that as you guys see in the video how wet it was we packed a ton of gravel and you can see down here the ground line at 110 centimeters and we literally packed gravel all the way up there layer by layer i just kept running that plate compactor so this is the last wall that's going to be done over here we're doing the three walls first and we're going to leave that one open for now so we can get materials in here that'll be the last wall that we dig so i can start bringing in gabor or they also um, backfill so i can run and spread the backfill out um, now this excavation you see on the side most of that's going to be put back that's not the actual backfill uh, the backfill will be spread out in layers and packed down water packed and then mechanically packed with the machine so we can get a really tight backfill so i'll give you guys another view of the back side of this property so a lot of structural enforcement it's a lot of structural support in these columns and I had mentioned to you guys the rotation of the stirrups. So you can see the 135 in there. They've all been spaced correctly. So the progress made this week was absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't be happier. Uh, we're going to be pouring concrete on Monday. We're going to be pouring the backside footer. Uh, it's going to be an all day thing. Come Tuesday, we'll pour the front side wall, get all the forms torn down and move them once again so we're ready to start pouring more concrete week two amazing amazing results um but before i go there was actually one additional change i had told you guys in the videos we weren't going to be using hollow block and as you see in the video you've probably seen a stack of hollow blocks sitting there due to a delay in our our building plans our building our blueprints I couldn't get the, the form submitted to Stark and AAC and I couldn't get the form submitted to Stark and AAC in time. Um, that's going to set us back quite a bit of time because we didn't get the blueprints in time. I have no choice but to go with hollow block, the other three feet on the front and the other seven feet on the sides. 
So unfortunately, I have to use hollow block, but I wasn't going to use hollow block below the ground. I wanted that strong structural, solid concrete wall below the ground. I didn't want any blowouts. I didn't want any moisture issues. So, but yes, unfortunately we have to go with hollow block on part of that going all the way up. I didn't want to, but the shipping cost just to ship out the AAC for the fence was not economical for us. The shipping cost is a lot of money for the Stark and AAC. I couldn't justify just one semi to be sent out here. I wanted to place the order all at one time. But for the house, we do have our, our building plans and permits submitted to them now. Um, they are compiling the cost of the, all the AAC, the lentils, uh, it's embedded adhesives, a render, and skim coats. And we should have those and we should have that order placed by the end of next week. And we should have the semis brought in. Now there's a possibility, you know, there could it could have happened for the fence. But we decided just to, in case they get done with this, I don't want to delay them. I want to keep stacking. I want to get that wall done because it's critical I get backflow or backfill in here and get this packed down so that it has time to sit before we start the structural components of the house, the columns, the, the footers. And all that good stuff so i'm glad you guys followed me i'm glad you guys are joining me again for week two i'm really excited for you guys to see the progress of this um there's a lot of thought that goes into this so week two total cost as of date you're going to need to pause this section now coming up so you can see the total cost we've spent on materials now i'm not including any equipment that i've purchased that's going to be at the very end of the building process so this is just for supplies and materials and labor. Here's week two total costs. I'm also going to include part of week one and with week two since we didn't get that in there. So here's our total cost so far. Until we see you guys next time, we really appreciate you following us. And if you have any tips or suggestions, please leave them in the comment box. Merry Christmas to all is coming up soon and be safe. Can't take my eyes off, can't take my eyes off, can't take my eyes off, can't take my eyes off. You got the motion, dance in slow motion. My eyes can't help looking at you right now.